Calvary today. We're glad that you're here. Pray that you're already feeling the presence of the Lord. I would ask that you would keep us in your prayers as uh, we are endeavoring to get through all of this spring cold stuff that's been going on. I guess it's spring. I guess I know it's colds. I can tell you that for sure that we've all been dealing with. A lot of folks are not not feeling well because of this. Some are listening in in the, in the parking lot over 88.1. And, uh, well, we're just going to see what God has for us here today. Glad that you've come. Today, we also kick our, off our Save Our Children fundraising. And so we are not going to be uh, taking up our Sunday school offering in this Sunday school class today, but we'll do that in our family worship service. So I'd like to turn right into the scripture here today. Welcome to all of our guests that are here today. We'll make mention of them more in our next service, but we're glad that you've come out and that you're a part of this service today. But I'd like to bring your attention to the book of Matthew chapter number nine, verses 35 through 38. And it says, Jesus went about all of the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he looked out over the multitudes, the Bible says he was moved with compassion on them. Now he looked upon them and there was, there was something that was was missing in them. The Bible says they fainted and were scattered abroad as a sheep having no shepherd. And when Jesus looked upon them, the, the compassion of God began to be expressed and conveyed to those that were there listening to him, his disciples that were there listening to his teachings and his statements and He went on and he said to his disciples, the Bible says that the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. John chapter 20. going to have to be careful with this voice. I can tell I'm going to start coughing. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> John chapter 20, 21 through 22, then said Jesus to them, peace be unto you as my father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and he said, receive Ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Also I'd like to take you to Luke chapter 10 and verse number 1. After these things the Lord appointed other 70 also. And he sent them two by two. Before his face into every city and place. Whither he himself would come. Now. Well, let's just pray and ask the Lord to help us. Lord Jesus, we thank you today for your word. And I pray, God, that what you have placed in my heart and spirit, I'd be able, Lord, to to convey that to these folks that have gathered into this service today of the importance, God, of being involved in your, your harvest, 
into the work of the Lord. I pray God a blessing upon each of them in Jesus name. Amen. And you, you may be seated. I, I want to talk to us about having a, a mind for the harvest. I want to, to talk to us about God's call to the harvest. Now, as we look at Luke chapter 10 and verse number 1, I want us to apply this verse, not from the literal sense of the appointment and the purpose of the 70 that went out that day. But I want to be able to, from a spiritual sense, be able to recognize our commission and the fact that we have been sent. We have been sent to introduce Jesus Christ to a world that does not know him. And as we introduce him to them, we can have a confidence that he is going to show up. He is going to be there. At times when we begin to convey to folks of the, the peace of God that passes all understanding or the fact that he is the comforter and he will comfort us through the storms of life and such. It's more than us just telling them of what he's done for us, but it is offering to them an opportunity to be able to receive from him as we have received from him. And you will find as you begin to work in this harvest that as we are witnesses of what God has done for us and we share that with someone, that as you begin to do that, there will be a presence of God that will begin to work in that conversation. Whether it's with uh, someone you meet in the marketplace you find at the, the Hannaford or something like that or one of the other places that you might shop and you begin, begin to talk to somebody as you're standing there looking at all of the canned goods and such and you know that there's so many different choices and someone's sitting there looking for their particular things good chance to just open up a conversation and say wow there's a lot of choices here today isn't there and they'll say yeah there sure is and look at the prices and, and you know the goal and before you know it you're, you're able to introduce them uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they may just open up to you immediately. Um, and you can feel it in your spirit. And you can ask them, would you like for us to pray? And you say, I mean, you, we can pray in the Walmart? Sure you can. You can pray at the, the Applebee's or wherever you might be. You don't have to make a big spectacle of the situation, but you can pray for that individual in the things that they're dealing with. Because people are dealing with a lot of different things in our world. And if you're wondering, are they stressed? There's a really a good chance for you just to simply say, <laughs> just take it for granted. Don't take it for granted that they're not stressed. Most likely, take it for granted that they are stressed because we live in a very stressful world. But it gives us the opportunity to be able to connect with them and to introduce the Lord Jesus to them. And you will find that he will, he will meet you there. He will meet you there. And so as we apply this to our life, we're basically, if you look back in history, there was a, a town crier. And the town crier, because they didn't have their internet and newspapers and maybe all of those different things going on, and there was a, a way to be able to, to convey to, to all of the townsfolks of some important information, there was a town crier that would go forth and uh, cry out to them to listen. Hark, hark, hark. And the important news break would come out. And he, they would present that to the people. And they would go through the town. And uh, we are, in a sense, the same. In that we have a world that needs to hear. And we have a message. We have a very good message. It's a positive message. It is something that will help not just one or two. Not just a percentage of, in sense of 10 or 15 percent, but 100 percent. For God so loved the world 
What he has done and what he has is not just for a few. It is not just for a 10 or 20%, but it is for the world. And Jesus said for us to pray for laborers. And if you will pray for laborers, there is a good chance that you will become a laborer. You will begin as a disciple and you can become an apostle. You see, it's, it's something that we start out as and then we are brought into. And our Lord is the King of Kings. He's the, the Lord of the harvest. He's the King. And if He sends us to do something, He will give us that signet ring of authority. In other words, He will, he will give us the ability and the authority to do what He has called for us to do. Now, let's just define some of the terminology that we find in these verses. First of all, the harvest. The harvest, this is the reaping in the sense of a crop. That's what it's referring to. It's, it's a reaping in the sense of a crop. We're not talking about wild grapes. We're not talking about wild strawberries. We're not talking about wild blueberries or something like that. We are talking about a crop. A crop is something that you plant. You intentionally plant it for a time of harvesting. And so recognize that what God has done in our world and what God has done in building His church is not just an accident. This is on purpose. And the seed is going forth on purpose. And, and His Word, amen, is that seed that is scattered out amongst the people. And it is intended to bring forth a, a harvest or a purpose to be fulfilled in it. And there's a promise that His Word will not come back void. And so we, we see here that the harvest is plenteous. <clears throat> More tomatoes than what you know what to do with, right? You've been there. Uh, and they all kind of come in at once, right? And you're, you're trying to can some here and eat a bunch there. And, and it gets to the place that you start just giving it out uh, to everyone, your friends and neighbors and such. What this is referring to in this harvest is that it is plenteous. It's long, it's much, it's many, and it's often. I'd like for us to just kind of digest that a little bit when we, we begin to think about what what the Lord intends for us to do as being believers, as being Christians, as, as being the followers and disciples of the Lord in sharing and working in the harvest. It's not just something that's, you know, sporadic. It's, it's something that's long and, and it's, it'll keep on working. Amen. It's, it's much, it's many, and it is often. And then it talks about how that the, um, the, the harvest is, is ripe, and it's ready, it's ready for that harvest time. Uh, refers to it as being white. It refers to it as being ready. It refers to it as being waiting. Everybody say waiting. Waiting. Uh, that tomato's waiting for you to pull it off the vine. Uh, that particular berry is, is waiting to be picked. It's, it's ready. Now, now, sometimes when we look at the harvest of souls and the winning of individuals to the Lord Jesus Christ and witnessing to them, a lot of times we have to battle with the thought that they really don't want what we have. Oh, they're really not ready for something like this. It's a trick of the enemy, I believe. I, I don't believe it lines up with the scripture. I, I believe it, that they are ready, and, and at times it's hidden from us to keep us from, from actually involving them in the harvest as being a part of what God wants to do in this world. And so they're, they're waiting, and even now, the, the definition there of, is a part of even right now. Not, don't say that it's, you know, four months. It's right now. And uh, so let's be involved in that. And it talks about the laborers. The laborers are, are toilers. 
literally, teachers figuratively. We look at laborers and we might think, I don't want to necessarily be a laborer. You ever worked as a laborer before? Uh, On a roofing crew or something like that? Most likely you do not have a hammer in your hand. You have a bundle of shingles on your back. (laughs) And you're climbing up the ladder uh, with those. And the rest of the crew that are the more skilled or more seniority are the ones that uh, are on the roof. And though that's not... You know, the, the best thing in the world, it's better than lugging shingles up a, up a ladder. Or, or you'll see a construction crew, and, and you'll see those that are more, uh, you know, they're just more uh, talented in a particular area, and you have a laborer, and that laborer is the, the gopher, the one that has to go and get the different things, and, and, and it might not be the most prestigious type of job. And so when we think about laborers, we, we look at that as maybe something we might not want to be a part of. But what this is talking about figuratively and, and really the spiritual application is that we are teachers. Teachers. And so the teachers are few. They're few in extent, degree, number, duration. And these particular things letting us know that, that there is a special touch upon us, but if we're not careful, we will start into something and we will not endure. We will, we will begin to get weary in well-doing, and if we're not careful, we will faint. And <clears throat> repetition is a teacher, right? It, it really is. It's a good teacher. And you had those little flashcards, you know, as a kid, you know, sight words or those uh, math problems, uh, you know, and you would, as a parent or as the child in receiving this, you would, you know, have that right before you, and they just wanted you to be able to say that word or give the answer to that that little equation that was there. And uh, if you didn't get it right, it, you know, if you got it right, it went in one pile. If you didn't get it right, it went in another pile. And uh, before you know it, you kept doing them over and over and over and over and over and over until. You got them all right, right? And uh, so for us to be involved in, in the kingdom and in teaching, at times you can become frustrated in the fact that uh, it may not look like that the individual is taking what you have to say and um, applying it to their life as quickly as what you would want. Also, this is referring to in the laborers that, that there are few, is that there may be those that are there, but they're just not making themselves available to be the teacher that Jesus wants for them to be. See, I believe that we were made for a mission. We really, we really are. We're, we're made for a mission. And you are made for the task of teaching. And you are made to carry the cross that Jesus is holding out to you. Every man has a cross. But I will assure you that if you do not want to be a part of the mission. And if you do not want to carry the cross, and if you do not want to teach or be a part of the task or be in the harvest, that the Lord will not twist your arm and and make you to be involved. But you were made for this mission and you can do it. I want you to say, I can do this. I can do this. Um, Prior to this service here today, God has spoken to us uh, many times. And those words that have come to us have come to us in the form of prophecies. Prophecies that have come to this church uh, in particular, but not just this church at times, but they would be more of a statewide or even a nationwide or worldwide prophecy. We've heard prophecies concerning a wave of revival. We've, we've heard that, haven't we? The, the wave of revival that God has um, promised upon the northeast of our nation to sweep across our nation. And I, I refer to revival as something that was brought back that once was. That's, that's what I refer to as revival. In other words, you know, in the prodigal, my, my son, he was dead, but now he's alive again, and he was revived. 
Um, I, I look at an outpouring as being something different. In, in other words, on the day of Pentecost, the promise is to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And I look at that as, a, as an outpouring. And, and I just say that just to kind of get and give you the feeling as to where I am coming from here today and concerning the harvest. And I believe that there's two... Uh, Two parts of this harvest, the harvest of the revival of those that once knew him, lived for him, filled with his spirit, baptized in his name, part of the, part of the work, part of the, the harvest and such, <clears throat> coming back. They, they left, they, they had their hand to the plow, but they, they left, but I believe they're coming back. I believe that the prodigal is coming back, amen, and and part of the, the, the prodigal uh, movement of coming back to the church has the names of some of your loved ones and your children, etc. And, and then uh, there is the, the outpouring upon those that do not know and have not heard and have not been a part of the apostolic church, amen, up to this point. So we have heard many, many powerful prophecies and uh, the wave of revival, the works of his powerful right arm, etc. We've, we've heard a lot. Therefore, I, I want to make this declaration that the prophecies of God are true and the prophecies of God will occur just as he has spoken. Amen. We can rest assured of the uh, truth of the prophecies of the Word of God. Amen. Now, recently, I received a prophetic word. It was shared with me and actually many others. But as this prophecy was shared to me, it was as if an electric shock just kind of jolted me. Now, any of you that are experienced with any kind of electrical work, I mean, you touch something like that, it just kind of gives you a little jolt. And if you keep holding on to it, it'll give you about 60 little jolts per second or however that all works. And, and they call it hertz, I think, and they do. Um, the... Uh, this, this shock just came, came upon me as this was being read. It was, it was in a, a general meeting, but it was as something came particularly to me. And as it was being read, and I will share it with you, uh, I was impressed to, to bring it back here and to share it the next opportunity that I I got, and I had to, to go to the individual and say, you gave this prophecy, and, or they shared this prophecy, and it was a prophecy that, that came in the month of July, this past July, July the 22nd, it was in, a, it was in one of their district board meetings, and he had it carefully written out, and I just wanted the words. I, I, I'd already gotten the gist of what it was, and I liked what I heard, and I felt the unction of the Holy Ghost. And, and so I felt that this was something that I needed to share. So listen carefully. He says, I have been a faithful father to you, and you have become the beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I have opened the storehouse of heaven, and I have granted the inheritance that you desire. I will walk with you. I will anoint you. I will make you prosperous as you seek first my kingdom. My favor is upon you, and I will bless the work of your hand. Your vision shall be inspired. And I will give you the resources to fulfill the desires of your heart that align with my will. 
and I will be delighted to do so. And like I said, upon hearing this prophecy, it, it came to me that not only did I need to hear this, but that you needed to hear this. But not only do we need to hear this, but we need to receive this. And not only do we need to receive this, but we need to share this. Let me break this down for just a little bit. God, number one, God has been faithful. Through all that we have been going through over the last several months and the different things that individuals have been facing, and it's been as if it's been a, you know, a, 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 a storm. Um, you know, it's like when it rains, it pours. It's been like from one family to another, from one individual to another, and it's gone around the church, and we have been, I guess you would say, under the proverbial gun. We have been in the sights of an enemy, an adversary, uh, or just life in general. I, I, I guess we can describe it in a lot of different ways, but it, life has not necessarily been easy for us over the last little bit of time. And, I, and I'm not in any way discrediting what God has done for us. But I am, I am a realist, you know what I'm saying? You know, when the wind's blowing 40 mile an hour, I'm pretty good to say, hey, wind's blowing 40 mile an hour, you want to hold on to your hat, right? You know, not just peace and calm. But on the other hand, um, I don't want to lose my faith and my assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And though the wind blows and the waves crash upon the, the boat, we can rest assured that he's going to take us through. Amen. He's a faithful God. Secondly is, of this prophecy, we have ob obtained his favor. Everybody say favor. Isn't it, glad, isn't it good? Aren't you glad to be in favor with God? <laughs> I tell you what, if God be for us, then who can be against us? If we are in the favor of God, you can rest assured everything is going to be okay. But let me reverse that for just a moment. If God be against us, then no one can be for us. You know, I'm glad that we have obtained his favor. Thirdly is that we have access. Go ahead and say access. You know, we, we, we go window shopping at times and we just kind of look and, and it's, it's behind the glass and we can't necessarily touch it. And, and many times, not only can we not touch it and such, but we, we probably don't have the uh, resources to be able to buy it. And just to kind of appease us a little bit, we, we walk through the, you know, the, the shopping area or we, you know, peruse the, the internet or, or whatever and look at things that we, we know that we're never going to be able to buy in our current condition. But here we are with an access today. Um, we don't need to look at the things of God and think, you know what, we, we, we can't have that. That's just something for us to look at and hope for and Hope that someday, someday, that we'll be able to have those things. Everybody say access again. Fourth thing is that God has released the power of our forefathers upon us. As I read from the scripture, it says, you know, as I've been sent, and then as, I'm going to send you in the same way. I be believe that we can lock on to that. And not only is Jesus saying to the disciples, you know, as I was sent and as the, the, the power of God working through me has done these great things, I'm, I'm, I'm enabling you as the disciples to go forth and the 70 to go forth and to us to go forth. The power of Christ is upon us. The fifth thing is that God is present. Everybody say God is here. God is here right now. God is here. At times, we under, well, let me just say, we understand the omnipresence of God. He is everywhere, don't we? Uh, the psalmist spoke of it quite clearly. He just said he's everywhere. The problem is that many times we do not recognize that God is here. And we miss the fact and we call him the gardener when he's the Christ. And, and we look at him and we, we, we think, you know, uh, uh, you know, hey, if, 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 can you just tell us where the body is? 
And we don't even realize that it is the risen Christ that's actually speaking to us at that particular moment. We can become so busy. Uh, the problems of life can become so big. The things of this life can get so close to us that we can see nothing but the problem and situation that we face. <laughs> oh boy. God is with us. God is present. Number six, we have an anointing. There is a, there's an unction. There's a blessing that comes upon His people. Seventh, we will find prosperity in His kingdom. We will find prosperity in us becoming kingdom-minded and God first. Number eight, we can receive His favor and His blessing upon our life. Number nine, I'm referring to all of these things that contained in that prophecy. And there's, I, got, I, I got 11 of them, so I want to just kind of get through them quickly here. Our vision will be clear. Some clarity. You know, there's, sometimes it's just, just a feeling that comes over us when we're able to see where we're at. Oh, by the way, we're supposed to get a big nor'easter on Tuesday or something like that. Some more snow coming. Yippee. But when I'm plowing down this road here, first, I like to go fast. And I like to go fast because it will throw that snow 40 feet into the woods almost. It gets it really out of the way. And there's these little orange sticks down through, and a few are missing because we get a little too far over. But they're there to guide us or guide me at that particular moment. And my particular plowing apparatus has some parts that aren't there that might help in, in this particular problem. But what happens is it blows back onto the windshield and I can't see. But I can see a marker. I know I'm still in the road, or hope I am. And I'm still holding down on the accelerator because I want to move the snow. But then by the time I get down to the end and the, and the wind is blowing in a particular way and such, and it clears up just all of a sudden, there's just something that, that comes over you. It's just this feeling of, hey, I can see now. You know, I, I have some clarity. We live in a world today that things can become so obscure. <clears throat> and the Bible does say we, we, we look through a, a glass darkly. And, you know, sometimes it's not so much what we're going through and what we're experiencing at the moment. But if we could just could see a little bit better. But that's where faith comes in. Because we do not walk by faith or walk by sight. We walk by faith. But when that clarity comes, and the Bible, this, this prophecy speaks about our vision becoming clear. A vision of what God wants from us. A vision of what God wants for this world. Clearer as the coming of the Lord approaches. Number 10, resources. Everyone say Resources. Resources will come by us putting ourselves into the will of God. Every day that they walked with the Lord, the manna came. It was just the resources were there. This prophecy declares that the resources will be there. Amen. And number 11, just kind of wrap that this section up a little bit, is that the Lord is delighted to do this, to fulfill this in us. Now, I'm going to wrap up here shortly. Um, matter of fact, John, come to the piano if you would. Uh, sometimes ministry is just a matter of plodding along. It seems at times that Nothing really worthwhile is happening. It might be uh, that neighbor that you are working with, a best friend that you're trying to influence into the kingdom of God. It might be a, a spouse. 
It might be a parent, a brother, sister. That you're trying to influence and bring to the Lord and see the salvation of God to come upon their life. But sometimes it doesn't seem like it's working. Have you been there? I have. Sometimes it gets a little dull. Have you ever considered that sometimes a servant, everyone say servant, a servant in a great house has to polish the silver. Everyone, have you ever been to an event when there was the silver that was out there on the table? And it was so fine. It shines. It looks so good. But someone, someone has to to polish that. Now, it's one thing if it's just one fork or one spoon. But there are many place settings. At times, ministry can be just like that. You polish the vessel. And in a short period of time, before you know it, that vessel begins to accumulate some tarnish. It's not just a one and done with silver. So again and again and again, you get the idea you have to go back and polish the silver. Polishing silver is dull. It's repetitive work. No matter how good of a job you do, It's going to have to be done again in a few months. Oftentimes, it can be a smelly job. You ever use that stuff? It works, but it's not the most pleasant. The problem is that some leave leave the, the job. When the, when the road gets long and dull, and boring, and that we don't see what we would like to see in the, in the time and in the, in the moment, but you have to keep going on. You, you have to keep walking. You, you have to keep going in the direction of the Lord and there are times you will feel like flying (laughs) you'll soar with the wings of eagles there's times that you are going to feel like (laughs) me Jesus we can do it all and other times you're going to feel like you know Me and Jesus and all the angels in heaven and everybody else on the earth. We can't do anything. You know, most anyone is is glad to work the party. Right? The trouble comes when it's time to prepare. And worse than the preparation is the clean up and all of these things are a part of the harvest and there's going to be times when it's way here and other times it's going to be down here but God has called us there's a calling to this harvest that we would labor in the kingdom And that we will reap if we faint 
not. Would you stand with me right now? I, I want you to know these three things about the harvest. Number one, you can be a witness. Number two, you can teach a Bible study. Number three, you can be a good neighbor. So I close with this question. Will you hear God's call to the harvest? And will you be a part of it? It is a call to action. And the answer is something that only you can give. Would you bow your head? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your presence here in this room today. Lord, we have shared your word. And I'm asking God right now that as we have heard it, that we would allow for it to be applied in us. No matter where we are at in our walk with you, that we would be in the place where that you could use us And God, that you could bless the words that we speak about you and the word of God that we share with this lost world. I pray, God, that we would hear the call and that we would answer the call in the affirmative. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing and let's just worship the Lord for just a few moments. Amen. Let this be Wash me white Let this be your prayer right now. Purify this heart of mine. Lord, I'm giving you control. So let me be a vessel. One that's worthy to be used. Make me in your image. Make me bold.